What's going on everyone? Steven here from TechMaker.tv. In this episode, we're going to start doing something occasionally that I've been wanting to do for a little while, and that is look at a little bit more real project code. So obviously, I can't show you proprietary code from clients or former employers or anything like that. But I do have a couple of somewhat bigger projects that I've built on my own over the past couple of years. And I've been trying to update some of those lately and running into some issues that I thought would be interesting to show everyone. And also, if by some crazy chance you happen to be in the target market, maybe this actually works out well for both of us. But in any case, I want to show you a little bit of code for an app today. Um, called Lead Jetty that I've built, which is essentially smart forms that you can embed or host or whatever. We can, we don't have to go into through all the details, but I want to talk about view components and how to start uh, organizing some of the code because uh, as you'll see as we go through this, I have um, not a lot, but it's starting to become a mess and I haven't even done very much and I want to look at exactly how we can structure our view component folders so that it's a little bit more reasonable because um, if you have a lot of features that have a lot of components, I can imagine it getting out of hand. Um, so with all of that said, I'm going to give you a quick give you a quick demo of what I've got, and then I'm going to show you the code, and then we're going to uh, make some refactoring. Um, with all that said, let's jump in. So I'm going to walk you through this short form here. This is all completely made up, bogus stuff. As you can see, I'm on ngrok up here, so this is my test environment, or our dev environment rather. Um, but I'm going to just fill this out um, with some fake data. As you can see, I've already done that, so it's pretty populating. So this is essentially like, imagine this is a landing page, you're downloading a free ebook or something like that. And then we go into asking questions, and then we can pull back, you know, variables and say, oh, my favorite color is red too, do you like pancakes? And then we can say uh, yes, or you can go back and say no, and there's different things that happen. It's really, this is a hyper simple example, but what I want to show is that all of the different types of inputs, so if we go through here, we have a yes, no input, we have a multiple choice with buttons, um, and then we have a first name, which is just a text field, and this is actually an email field, so if I try to submit it without uh, any email stuff, it's going to basically tell me you're missing an at sign or whatever. So that's pretty straightforward, but you can see that there's several different types of inputs. So let me show you how you set all this up on the, the back end of the app, not the actual back end, but like the administrative back end. So basically we have um, all these steps laid out. Um, you can add actions, which redirect to other places or integrate with all sorts of stuff. All, thing, all sorts of things like that. You can drag and drop everything, all that kind of cool stuff, but that's not what I wanted to show you. What I want to show you is we have all these different types of elements that you can add. And for the most part, these are going to, I think some of them are all sort of compressed into one element right now. I'm in the middle of refactoring all this, so it's not completely finished and perfect. Um, but ultimately, probably all of these will have their own element or something approximating having their own component, rather. Um, so... Now you basically have the gist, so you can set all of this up back here. You can see we're using liquid templates over here, so we can like do variables and so on and so forth, and you can assign variables to answers and whatever. Okay, cool. Enough of all of that. Let's go look at the code. So if we pop over to Adam, you'll see here that I've, just with what I took you through, um, I've already got all of these components, which... I, given the roadmap that I have in mind, I can just see like having a bajillion components just related to building out the form itself. Um, so that can be a problem, especially if I want to start adding components for other things like on the administrative side or whatever, because there's a lot of UI back there that could benefit from this as well. So I want to look at how exactly we should organize this. So I was reading through the docs on a view component uh, to see if they had any suggestions. And they have this little tiny section on conventions. Um, and they say that component module names are plural as for controllers and jobs. So you have this thing here where you have like users avatar component or whatever. In addition to that, um, if we do a quick search for module, which you can see I have already done, 
they tell you avoid giving your containing folder the same name as your .rb file. So it looks like basically we're going to create, so I'm thinking, and I may change this later, but you know, whatever, the naming isn't the most important thing right now. I think just getting the structure set up right uh, is, is what I have in mind. What I want to do is basically have something that's called like form elements or something like that, or maybe just elements for short. And then inside of there have all my different types of elements. Um, I don't know if I'll put the actual element thing in there, and you'll see what I mean in just a second. So there's a top level item called element, and then there's all sorts of different types of elements. And uh, we'll talk about that more in just a second, but in any case, what we're going to do, I think, is basically just say elements, colon, colon, and then the type of element. And let's go look at the actual code right now to see why this is interesting. So, by the way, I have some uh, episodes on design patterns, and so if you're confused about anything that I talk about going forward, be sure to go check those out. Because um, essentially what I've got going on is it, we render this element component. And so there's a bunch of elements that get loaded in an instance variable or whatever. You don't really need to know all of that. But um, essentially what we have is we have this content for, which can be a label or, or something like that. And then we have the actual input itself. And we have to check if the input is present because we have some things that are display only. So for example, like it might be an image or rich text or something like that. So we check if that's present and then we render it. Now this looks a little bit magical, so let's take a look at this element component. Now this is a kind of a mess right now. It's way better than it was, but it's kind of a mess. So if we look, sorry, let me get both of these open so we can switch between them a little more easily. So right here, I'm saying input is input for, and then I'm rendering the input. So back over here in my element component, you can see that I have this big case statement inside of input for. And then each one of these calls different types of element component, basically. So what I think I would like to do, I'm going to write a comment right here so that I can, you know, remember this without actually changing the code right now. So what I might want to say is something like elements uh, HTML component, and then dot new dot 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 whatever. So that's kind of what I want to go for. Now what this really is, I think, is probably actually a factory that's needing to be refactored a little bit further. Um, so like if you want to know about factory patterns or whatever, you can go check that out. This content for, I haven't touched, I pulled this straight out of some old code um, and put it into a component. But we need to change that and clean it up. But I think, yeah, this is probably some kind of factory hiding here. So we have like a component, an element factory needed somewhere or something like that. In any case, I'm not going to worry with all that right now. What I'm going to do is just see if I can get this set up so that we have elements, HTML component new, and it should be pretty straightforward. It should basically be a new folder called elements. And I think, so the, the one thing about this is, like obviously the class loading should just work, but the little HTML bit, like the HTML.erb working is the part that I'm curious about. Um, because each one of these components has the HTML part and the element part. So let's just start with the HTML component and put them both inside elements and elements. And then let's rename these. So, so instead of HTML element component, we're just going to have HTML component and, and we'll rename that. And really, that name kind of sucks, if I'm being honest. Uh, HTML element, like what is that? That could be anything. We really ought to call that like standard form field or something. So like I said, I'm going to have to come back and do some renaming on all this stuff. Um, but let's try this. So now I should just be able to copy this and replace this. I'm kind of working on two different computers right now. I have one, this is my older one that's set up for recording, and then I have another one that I'm working on that, and I'm using uh, VS Code, so right at this moment, this is Adam, and I haven't taken the time to set this computer up, so like all of my keyboard shortcuts are completely jacked up right now. Um, so if I do anything crazy, that's why. So, okay, so now we have elements, HTML component, 
blah 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 let's just go refresh actually I need to open that up again in a new tab this is our stats page here um, let's open that in a new incognito window and see if it's broken expected file to define oh it's because I need to put a module that's my bad obviously there's nobody else here um, and I didn't change that not that name anyway so HTML component so what we want to do is say module actually you know what instead of doing the whole module thing let's just call it elements colon colon HTML component let's try that and let's see if we're back to working so it looks like that works perfect okay cool so let's just quickly uh, drag and drop all the rest of the elements that we want to do in there multiple choice so on and so forth so I think I'm gonna leave the two element ones on the outside. I'm not 100% sure yet. That my opinion on that may change as we kind of build this out further. Um, but we need to rename all these things. So that would be boolean component. Um, and again, I think the naming on this stuff is, you know, I'm kind of working on this on my own on the side, so I haven't put as much time and energy into it. Um, but it could definitely be better so let's say elements colon colon multiple choice this is actually one of the ones that kind of sparked me wanting to rename this thing I was like this is too much multiple choice button element component let's just get rid of this multiple choice button component it's a little bit better it's definitely more specific so you know what we're dealing with here multiple choice button component um, and then we'll have elements and then multiple choice drop down. Let's see, this is probably kind of boring to watch, I bet. I'm always thinking about that as I'm kind of just doing mundane stuff as I'm like writing all this up. It's sometimes uh, hard to imagine anybody actually watching it. But in any case, I hope it's helpful. Um, let's see, so that looks like I got all of those. And then down here, we'll just copy this and fix all of these. I think the only one that I don't have in this specific test is actually the drop down so I'll worry about that later. Um, so what do we got here? We got boolean com elements, boolean component, elements, multiple choice button component, elements, multiple choice drop down component. So now if I build out a bunch of other features um, you know for other areas like the stats or whatever I can just kind of keep these things slightly more organized. So let's go just run through this really quick and make sure we didn't bust anything. Let's do Jeff, um, Jeff at test IBC. Sign me up. Uh, my favorite color is green. Minus two, do you like pancakes? No. Yes, okay, cool. So it looks like everything works exactly as it did before. That's basically it for this episode. As I said at the beginning, uh, this is leadjetty.com. So if by some crazy chance you're actually in the market for something like this, or you know somebody who would might be able to use it, uh, definitely send them my way because uh, I would be happy to talk to them. Also, if you find this on my TechMaker channel, uh, I can definitely get you a good price on this. I know the person who owns this little business. It's me. So, you know, I can hook you up. Um, I think there's a starter plan. Yeah, it's 29 bucks a month or something. So it's not crazy. If you want to use this, it'd be cool to like, you know, add some, uh, you can add essentially logic and all kinds of crazy stuff to forms on websites if you're, you know, working as a web designer or something like that. Um, we've used this for a number of things for our uh, consulting business. So anyway, uh, just a little small plug there. Hope it doesn't bother you too much, but uh, somebody's got to pay the bills around here. So in any event, uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode and um, hope you found it useful. If you want to see more stuff like this where we go through more in-depth uh, code stuff that's from real projects, let me know. I'm happy to kind of dive a little bit more into this kind of thing. You won't get as quite clear of a picture of the entire project as we are in some of these other step-by-step -step project builds. Um, but it could be useful and the code is a little more difficult in plenty of cases than you know some of the demo apps we're building. So all that said, uh, if you like this video, um, definitely leave a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, leave a comment and let me know. Uh, that helps me know 
kind of what you're into. So um, all that said, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, be sure to do that, and I will talk to you next time.